Hi, Terry Gillespie here, and welcome to Author Highlight with Terry. And I am so excited with this author, and um, she's kind of in the wings waiting for us. So while I do a little housekeeping, and that is just to remind you to be sure and like comment and share this video and also um it's especially helpful if you subscribe to this youtube channel and down below if it's still red that means you haven't subscribed yet but if it's not read, it means you have. And thank you very much. And welcome to any new viewers. And if you have kids and you know kids, you're going to want to watch what's coming up. So let me welcome Karen Whiting. Hi, Karen. Hello there. <laughs> I am so honored to be on with you, Terry. I just love your spirit and your enthusiasm. And I do hope people, friends, followers, prayer warriors, and moms who want their children to pray will watch the video, share it, and comment on it. Yes. Thank you so much. That's it's it's so important because uh, we found out there's actually an algorithm that the more likes and the more comments, the higher in the food chain these videos go. So we really want um, authors like you and books like what we, you write. Um, have more visibility in the YouTube world. We really need this right now. So thank you. Um, I thought what I would do first is uh, read a little bio about Karen. Um, Karen Whiting writes to help families thrive. Her newest book, The Supersized Book of Bible Craft Gifts, provides over a hundred paper crafts with over a hundred related steam lessons. Is that steam lessons or stream? Yes. Steam. No, it's uh, for science, technology, energy, art, math. <laughs> oh, how exciting. So seeing how all of these really interact with one another and that you can do one thing and talk about the others at the same time. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, so, and these also are focusing on kindness, which is science and so it's both right and left brain that are being It is. So you challenged. make a craft and you add words to encourage people, but you may make something with stars where you then will do some facts about stars and astronomy and look up a verse on shining like the stars that God wants us to do. Oh, I love it. Now, you also enjoy adventure like camel riding in the Canary Islands, white water rafting in Australia, and scuba diving off Bermuda's coast, as well as cooking and crafts. And she, uh, Karen is a certified writing and marketing coach, international speaker, former television host. Now, which television show was that? Puppets on Parade. Oh, it was for my Amy educational television when I lived there. And it was really fun. I was doing a lot of puppetry at the time and had a couple of books out. And I, I may be doing another puppet book in another year, according to one of my editors. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you want editors to tell you to write books, so that, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so an award-winning author of 30-plus books for women, children, military, and families. She's a mom of five, including two rocket scientists and a grandmother. So, Karen, you are one busy lady. Um, how can our viewers keep in touch with you? Well, if they go to my website, they can sign up for my newsletter, which I'll be switching out, but they won't notice it. They'll still do a sign up. And when they do the sign up, they get some versatile recipes because moms often need that type of thing. And some ideas and tips on how to uh, get along with one another for the family and, and uh, different things. 
And they can also from there click on to follow me on social media, and particularly on Facebook. That's still mm -hmm. where there's a lot of people and a lot of my audience is there. I'm working on some others, but yeah, it's just, and um, they can always email me. I like that. They can contact me through my website to do that. And I do like to get back to people. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, and by the way, um, Bob put up your, um, your website address and it's gone now. So, but don't worry, all of those important links are going to be down below. And there are a lot of really good links that are going to be down below in the description section. So um, in the February author highlight blog, um, I asked a lot of really good questions and you had some really good answers and you actually had good questions yourself that you answered. So I encourage people to go over and take a look and read, read that interview because it's really good. And the link will be down below for that as well. But for my videos, I always like to do something different. And that is um, ask some other questions and have our authors read from their books. So, um, and by the way, I gave this book a five-star review and I've got the link for the review down there as well. But your, your devotional is so sweet and yet it's so powerful and practical and i thought it might be nice if you would just kind of demonstrate how this devotional works thank you for this opportunity these devotions are based on what i did with my own children as they were growing up so they've been in practice for a long time because most of them are, are parents now <laughs> But let me look at week four here, where it starts off with a question. Every week starts with a question here because I wanted to address questions that children often ask. So this one says, what does God do for me? <laughs> it's always what's in it for me, right? <laughs> then there's a family beatitude that flips it around a little bit to give you some of that answer of what you should be doing too. Happy is the family with grateful hearts for they will be cheerful. So it's not just about what God does for us, but what are we going to do for God? And the focus on is on giving thanks to God. Because when we give thanks to God, we realize what he's done for us. Then there's a weekly Bible verse. Give a lot of time and effort to prayer. Always be watchful and thankful. Colossians 4, 2, followed by an act. Uh, well, at the end of this thing, all right, the next thing is activity options of hands-on things to do. And so this one has you making some rainbow rocks that are going to be really fun to do because colors erupt and explode and run into each other when you do that. And that's just to help us think about the rainbow God put in the sky, the colors he put in the world, and how much he has already done for us and given to us. Then there's a little story, and this story is the terrible day. Let me just read from this, okay? So how's everyone's day, Dad asked after dinner and praying. Everyone groaned. This is the second dinner I made because I burned the first one, Mom grumbled. I struck out every time at bat, blanked out on a test and tore my shirt, Bobby complained. I forgot my homework and lunch. Also, I drove my bike through a puddle on the way to school and kids laughed at my dirty clothes. Anika whined, plus the dog chewed my favorite pillow. What about you, Dad? Well, my boss rejected my new proposal, so I have to start over again. And cars keep cutting in front of me on the drive home. An awkward silence settled over the room. Suddenly, Bob perked up. I know we all had a rough day, but we can thank God for our day since we are safe and God made this day. Before anyone could react, the doorbell rang. And this is a big turning point at this point, okay? Mom answered it. Surprise, a friend stood there with a big tray of cookies. She said, I decided to bake today and made extras for you. I felt like God wanted me to bless you. Everyone yelled hooray. Dad said, God knew we needed a blessing. So that's going into thinking about, you know, this was a bad day. Was God really with me? And realizing that, yes, he is. And then there's a few chat prompts. 
and a Bible story connection to read about rain, the rainbow and Noah after the terrible flood. So he had not only a terrible day, many terrible days, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then the chat prompts, um, which are things like enter his gate with thanksgiving, give thanks to the Lord. And so on these terrible days, you're not always thinking about it, but sometimes that's the best thing to do. So the activity is really fun. I mean, the prayer activity, family prayer, overflowing cups of thanks. And what we do here, I, I really love what I do. I have an empty jar sitting in a bowl, a clear jar you can see through. So you might want to use a mason jar or whatever, or an empty mayonnaise jar. And then be around the table, I've got a couple of jars of red water and blue water and little scoops, measuring scoops or coffee scoops. And each person takes a turn pulling from the water near them and pouring it into the jar while they thank God for a blessing um, he has given them until that flows up to the top. And then they keep pouring it in and watch it overflow into the bowl that the jar is sitting in until everyone keeps going around a couple of times and keeps watching this water overflow. Then you can talk about God has given us so much, even in a terrible day, we have so many things to be thankful for that as we thank God, we realize he's done a lot for us. And that addresses that question that was at the beginning. So what I love about that is there's continuity throughout the whole, the whole devotion. And, um, and I love the idea that you can do it. You just did it in one, you know, a few minutes. Um, and, but you can, the families can do it for as long as they want, or they can divide it up uh, by yeah. days. Right. It's just, it's so versatile and it's so deep that you could go back next year and get all new, all new information. Yes. Plus children grow not only in size and age, but in their intelligence and how deep they can think. So mm -hmm. the chat prompts, because the book targets ages five to 10, and often people are using it for a wider breadth than that. You can go deeper when they're older and not as deep on those chat prompts when they're younger. They may, right now, it's just enough to say there's lots to thank God about. In the future, it may be, you know, the Bible reminds us to give thanks for everything. But how can we give thanks on these terrible days? And a discussion on that takes them a little bit deeper. And so it's open for those types of things. So I love that, Karen. It's having that versatility with with the devotion is so precious and knowing that you're going to have the same components in each week so that um, the parents can feel comfortable as they're working with their children on that I just I, I just think it's brilliant actually um, so as I mentioned earlier, the blog, the highlight blog interview has some fascinating information about you and the reason why you help women and families and why it's so important to you. But for this interview, I thought we would have a little fun. And one of the questions I posed to Karen was, what is the silliest thing you've ever done related to writing? And I answered about one of the times that my house was full. It was Christmas Eve. My children were doing a puppet show for some children who had just lost their mom a couple months ago, first Christmas without her. And oh. I get a phone call. I answer and it is an editor that I had submitted something to. So I thought I can only go into my upstairs bedroom closet to hear her. <laughs> and I went in the bedroom closet and she's talking and talking, rambling on. And I'm thinking, why is she talking? Why did she call me? I sent one thing into her a few months ago and it was rejected. So I finally said, um, I just want to ask a question. You know, I've only sent one article in and you rejected it. So I'm not really sure why you're calling. Well, she went into dead silence and I just went <laughs> a minute or two. I don't know how long, you know how it can seem forever. And then she said, I don't know what happened. I Ask them to send you a contract where I was accepting. Ah. And the more I thought about it, the more I just love what you write. And I want you to write more for us. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it was just 
so funny to have that happen. And I'm, I mean, you have no idea how puzzled my mind was. Why is Virginia calling me? Why is she calling me? <laughs> so just so everybody knows, Karen will take meetings in the closet if, <laughs> if, if necessary. So, and, and on Christmas Eve, but I don't recommend doing that. So. It was just oh. so, such a funny thing. And I didn't expect it. The, the interesting thing is, you know, I wrote about this and I wrote about another embarrassing time with an editor of something that happened. And one of my editors, and I had written, mentioned that was a woman. Okay. One of my male editors said, did you change that to a female? Was that me that did that to you? <laughs> I don't remember what that embarrassing moment was, but I said, no, it really wasn't you. It really was a female editor. <laughs> and I thought, I said, oh, good. I really thought it was me because I do some crazy things at times. <laughs> so it just shows you editors are real people too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I'm still very intimidated by editors, but yeah. Um, I'll look forward to the day when, when I'm not, but I, I just have so much respect for a good editor after watching Genius, the, the movie Genius about, was it, I was trying to remember who the, um, who the author was, but the relationship between that editor and that insane, brilliant writer was you know you how do we take this book that is 5000 pages and turn it into 300 pages and not lose your voice so that's that's a good editor so well let's talk about the giveaway cuz each month um my authors that I interview give away some very wonderful things. And Karen has generously offered to um, the winner, uh, the devotional, which I'm going to hold up my copy. So she's going to off, she's going to sign that to whoever the winner is. And then she said she had another surprise. And you want to tell our viewers about that? I'm going to give a prayer activity kit, well, also a little bit of craft to it, to the winner, in which you will have uh, eight different activities. So one is, this is actually from my craft book, is making a star constellation mobile that you can keep adding more. You might recognize the Big Dipper. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's really fun for you and your children to make that and talk about stars, the star quality inside of us. You know, you can cut an apple in half and look at the star. And if you cut it crosswise, it always has this oh. same star inside that to remind us just as God put a star inside every apple, he puts a star quality inside of us. Well, with that, I also have things like in my book, there is a ball thing you can play with for prayer, one of the activities, but this is a ball that lights up when it bounces, okay? So I'm going to put this ball in as your ball to use for that prayer activity, and then the bouncing does, that that, that does stop. And <laughs> some other things that I'm not even necessarily going to tell you what they are right now, but they mm -hmm. will be, one is going to be on the four gifts of forgiveness. When you forgive someone, you receive four gifts from God, basically. And that's in there. And these are, you know, to do with the book are few of them are to do with the craft book that um, you're not having, but hopefully you'll like my writing so much, you'll want to have that also. <laughs> in the future. And with the uh, Star Mobile, there is a STEAM lesson that goes with it that that will be printed out for you also. So you'll get a little taste of that book and a, a few things to do with that'll tell you what week some of these different activities are in to have fun with your children while you're engaging them in prayer. I do think prayer should be engaging for children and for them that often means fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's interesting because biblically, uh, especially with the Jewish people, and I know you know a lot about uh, Jewish tradition, um, it is it is tactile, it's physical, it's not just spiritual. You know, when you um, 
you know, when it's the Feast of Tabernacles, you're building a sukkah and you're living in the sukkah and you're entertaining in the sukkah. So it's, you know, in Davidic worship, there's dance as well as as singing. And so um, God wants us to use all of our senses because he gave those to us. So it's wonderful that you're incorporating that into these books. So yay. So well, thanks. Yes, I do that. And that also makes me think of uh, the spring uh, celebration coming up just before Easter is uh, or just around Passover, it. Passover. Passover. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when you have the Passover meal, the children are asked questions. They answer those questions, the oldest child, and they have the, I'll not pronounce it right, afikoman, which there's is broken. Afikoman. Afikoman. And they have to find a piece. There's a hide and seek within that. And that's all part of their feast and their celebration. And I, I do think that that engages the children and I like to engage children in prayer with activities that just like the pouring of that water and where when we did that blessing I mentioned the red and the blue turns to purple mm -hmm. and one of the things I mentioned with that is the purple is a royal color why does he answer your prayers and mine why does he bless us because we're his children of the king we're royal <laughs> and the red and the blue the blue because the blue like the sky is above us anywhere we are on earth the red because of his love and his bloodshed and so it all ties together with that too and that you know is visual it's tech uh, tactile it's action oriented and i do like to do those types of things in prayer yeah it's um and like i said it is it's it's that Jewish lifestyle. And that's one of the reasons why we we love uh, living a Jewish biblical life, biblically Jewish life. And um, because it is about touching and feeling and each little thing has a purpose and, um, and you're doing that. It, it's just, it's so wonderful. Um, Thank you for this incredible gift. And there's going to be more surprises in there for the winner. So let's talk about how our viewers can enter. And uh, they can enter not just once, but you can have up to six entries into six chances to win this uh, giveaway. The first... Um, entry is to like the video and to leave a comment. That's one entry. If you share this video with family and friends on any of the social media, or if you have a, you can just send it on an email. That'll work. That's one entry. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel and you hit the little bell, then that's two extra entries and if you head on over to the blog which the link is down below and you leave a comment and like and share you also get another uh entry and if you subscribe to my newsletter then you get another entry and if you're already a subscriber to the newsletter or to this youtube channel all you have to do is leave a comment and like the video and I will make sure you get those two, three extra uh, entries. So, um, and also note that um, the entries, unfortunately qualified entries can only be the contiguous US uh, states because unfortunately it gets really expensive to go up to Alaska and Hawaii and Canada. So, um, so really excited about these gifts. So Karen, before we sign off, uh, do you have any final words? Well, I do want to thank you for what you've done and remind people that when they do these 
subscriptions and like and everything. You're blessing me. You're blessing Terry and you're blessing a lot of other authors that she's going to interview in the future. But I really just want to remind people that I wrote a family book about prayer, not to sell a book about prayer, but to help families because I'm passionate and to help children's ministry leaders. I am so passionate about raising up a new generation of prayer warriors. And in order to do that, children need to understand prayer. And that's what the activities and things do, the chats do, and to learn how to pray and find a way that they're comfortable praying. And that's why I offer them through the book, 52 Ways to Try to Pray. Because somewhere in there, each family and each person should find ways that they like to pray. Oh, I love that. I love that. And that's, to me, that's a pound your fist on the on the table passion. Um, and I think it is really important because our children are going into a world that we had no idea it was going to look like this. And prayer is so important because what prayer is, is relationship with our father. And, um, and that is the most important thing is our relationship with our heavenly father. And because it was hard won by Jesus, by his son. So Thank you so much, viewers, for watching my 16th episode of Author Highlight with Terry. And just a reminder in the description section below, all those great links are down there. And I will have all of Karen's info and especially where you can buy her books. And um, as always, Karen, and I really appreciate the follows, the likes and the subscribes to our <laughs> social media. And next month, the Author Highlight blog and YouTube interview will feature best-selling and award-winning author of historical biblical fiction, Jill Eileen Smith. So thanks again so much for stopping by. We'll see you next month. God bless and keep reading. <laughs>